once you got done, you know, working uh, with that first company, you, you founded your own company. I did. There was one other company in between, but it, it, it just got me a little bit more experience in the mm-hmm. corporate world. And in 2008, I was working for a publicly traded company. And, you know, I know you've worked with a lot of different companies, but in terms of culture, the, the biggest disconnect for me personally as a former special ops guy is a publicly traded company because it's, it's all about the profits. I mean, it, you know, there's good companies out there. Don't get me wrong. But when, when you're reporting financials every single day, I mean, we got to the point where we're not doing it quarterly. We're doing oh, it every really? day. I, I, I'm, are you people insane? I mean, I, I can't do what I'm supposed to be doing for the company if all I'm doing is looking at the numbers. So I got very, very disgusted by it, and I thought, okay, I've got enough experience. I can do this myself, and I started Pinnacle in 2008. And then what's that? What's the focus there? So we're an aerospace company. We we initially, you know, I mean, it was me and one other guy. So we started out with nothing other than a good idea and a PowerPoint briefing. And it's it's kind of hard. I mean, you know, a true startup like that in the defense contracting world is very difficult. I mean, most fail because it takes a long time to get contracts. And if you have no past performance, then you know, why is anyone going to give you any work? But we got some and we built on it and built on it, built on it. And now today I describe us as a, we do everything in the aviation industry except build the aircraft. So if you think about maintenance, flight operations, engineering, logistics, technical publications, uh, you know, all of it, we do all of that uh, for Predominantly helicopters, but we, I mean, we do the tilt rotor for the for Air mm-hmm. Force Special Operations Command. We do some fixed wing work for the Air Force. We get some international contracts. So we've really gone way beyond what I originally, you know, because you write the business plan and mm-hmm. where am I going to be in five years? And and it's it's a fairy tale, really, in most cases, especially a, a true startup because you don't know if you're ever even going to get any traction. So. But we're so far beyond that now. I mean, How big are you now in terms of employees? So we'll, we'll have a workforce of close to 600 by the end of the year. And, uh, you know, again, in five years, what did I think we would have? I don't know. I'd probably put – I'd have to go back and look at it. You know, 25 people, something like that. So it's enough people where we got a, we have a, uh, a human resources problem pretty much every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun stuff. Yeah. So – here you are. How many how many years you end up doing in the army? Twenty two. So you did twenty two years in the army. You are a damn POW. You f- you flew the best you know helicopters for the best unit in the world as far as aviation goes. You end up retiring from that. You work in the civilian sector for a while. You build this business up to a significant business. I would think maybe you're, you're you're saying to yourself, okay, maybe it's time to you know pump the brakes a little bit and take a little time for myself. But it turns out you're actually doing the exact opposite. I'm doing the exact opposite, and you know it's it, it was a tough decision because I was the runway I was lined up on, as I would describe it, was retire. Our youngest is graduating high school this year. You know the company's done well. I can do whatever I want. You know, in the, in the famous words, was it, was it Elon Musk who said, I could be on the beach drinking Mai Tais every day, but, you know, I want to make a difference. So uh, I decided to run for Senate. And I, I think you're getting that sentiment from a lot of veterans because, you know, veterans have seen the sacrifice that people who serve this nation have made. And then you see things like the way Afghanistan was thrown away and you see the way the southern border is being handled and and you see this mandatory vaccine mandate. And, you know, you in particular, where you hear speculation that SEALs are going to have to pay for their tridents and turn them in if they don't want to get the shot. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. And it just, you know, you can sit there and complain about it or you can actually try to do something about it. And I thought I feel the same way today that I felt in 2008 when I was working for that publicly traded company and I couldn't stand the way it was being run. I said I could do this better myself. So I kind of have, I feel that same way. I can do this better than other people that are doing it. And I've met a lot of folks recently through trips to D.C. And, you know, initially when you look at them, some of them sound intelligent and, and a lot of them are. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. But if you meet them and you find out what's really behind the curtain, it's, it's a little scary. We need we need more people with true life experiences, not career politicians, people who, you know, this is not for me. I, I'm not going there to, you know, be in office for the rest of my life. I'm going there to, to try to make a difference. And I really don't think you can understand military policy 
and business policy unless you've actually done it. And a lot of these people have not done it. I mean, they, they've studied it or maybe they think they know it, but, but they really don't. I mean, you look at some of the dialogue going on right now about Ukraine. You know, mm-hmm. some, a congressman said yesterday, you know, we would use nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> These people don't know what they're talking about, you know, and, and you, you got to have somebody that ha- can maybe apply the voice of reason. Now, you know, Alabama is a very red state. So in, in our state, it's all about winning the primary. And, uh, you know, that's in May of this uh, this coming year. And if that happens, it's pretty much a guarantee you win the general and then uh, start serving in February of 23.